welcome to the uh, welcome to the second uh, lecture on uh, Christology, the study of the doctrine of Christ and who He is, His person, His nature. Um, and so, what we're what we're doing today is uh, we're just going to walk through some basic things about uh, Christian history. Uh, it's important to understand that when we when we study Scripture, a lot of people have come before us and have studied this and have debated these things and so it's going to be really important for for us and for christians to just know the the basics of church history um and what we're looking at is the first four centuries so from the time of the apostles which we already dealt with uh before and then uh the next three centuries up until um the the 300s uh 8300 and so um uh, the first and second centuries. Uh, again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into what, what we did uh, in the last video, uh, but I think it's clear that the the apostles, uh, the people who actually knew and met Jesus, right? They testified that uh, the human Jesus was also divine, right? That he was both human and divine. There's a lot of questions they didn't answer, but they did certainly uh, know him as a human. He was a human being, Jesus of Nazareth, born. Talked about him being born, but also. Uh, also divine, also to be worshipped, also um, was the Redeemer, the Savior, and also talked about him as the Creator. Um, and so for the next uh, couple you know, generations of Christians, um, they basically did the same thing, right? They talked about uh, Jesus in those terms. Uh, here's a really good uh, quote from a church leader that we're going to talk about a little bit more named Irenaeus, um, where he says in one of his books, he says, uh, kind of a summary statement. He says, so then the Father is Lord and the Son is Lord, and the Father is God and the Son is God. For that which is begotten of God is God. Uh, so this idea that, that Jesus, the Son, is is God just like the Father is God. Um, uh, he This is a second generation or a third generation Christian, right? And Ir Ir Irenaeus heard the gospel from a guy named Polycarp, and Polycarp had heard the gospel from the Apostle John. And so you're talking about someone very early on uh, testifying uh, to, to this idea. Um, the first kind of big issue that confronts the church is uh, the, the issue of Gnosticism. And I put that in bold because I want you to write it down. I want you to know uh, the, this term. Uh, the, this, this is a kind of a broad philosophical concept that uh, there are some Christians, there's some people who aren't Christian who are Gnostic, but also some people in churches that were broadly Christian who embraced this kind of uh, heretical, this false teaching of Gnosticism. And basically the foundational idea of Gnosticism is that the material world is evil and only the spiritual world is, I'm sorry, that should say good and not um, God. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and change it. Uh, only the spiritual world is good. Um, Gnostics claim yeah. to have a secret knowledge to free them from the physical world. And so the word Gnostic has uh, has to do with the idea of of gnosis, of knowledge. And so they claim to have this secret knowledge going on. And that secret knowledge was basically this insight to the universe that, hey, um, the the physical world that we're in we're trapped in a cage that's our bodies and this physical world is bad and so there are teachers like marcion uh teachers like uh valentin uh, valentinus that taught that the god of the old testament was different than the god of the new testament uh taught that jesus was god uh, but not human um, he only seemed to be god and so there's this other term that i want you to know um called um Docetism, the idea that Jesus only seemed to be God. Uh, so it's, you know, Jesus was, um, his body is kind of a, an illusion. Uh, in reality, he's really a, a spiritual figure, a divine figure, um, but the body's only an illusion. So it, it is interesting to, to, to think that one of the first big heresies to hit the church um, and, and to confront the church is that Jesus is not really a human being, which is a you know interesting concept. Um, and uh, I want you to know these two names here, Tertullian and Irenaeus, both uh, Christian leaders that, that stood up and said, "Hey, this is not what the this is not what the apostles taught. This is not what um, what Christians believe." And so 
Um, here's a here's a picture I, I found of Tertullian, what he may have looked like. He was from North Africa. Um, I think it's important to keep in mind that so many of these early church leaders were actually, um, you know, either Middle Eastern or North African. Um, and so uh, there's, you know, there's a artist rendering, a modern artist uh, rendering of Tertullian. Um, and uh, let's see here. Um, the uh, the next big big issue uh, to confront the church is the issue of Arianism. Um, the idea of Arianism is the idea. Uh, well, uh, we can read here in the late 200s, uh, an Alexandrian deacon named he was in Alexandria, Egypt, named Arius, and he began teaching this. And I, this phrase is important, right? There was a time when the sun was not, a time when the sun did not exist. And so, in other words, Jesus was created. He was a created being, and he was not fully God. And so later on, you're talking around nearly 300 years after Jesus lived, um, there was uh, this teaching that, hey, um, Jesus isn't uh, fully God. He is, he is a created being. Uh, and so this started a controversy in the church. And eventually the Emperor Constantine, who had recently become a Christian and wanted to kind of help the church, even though a lot of his actions probably didn't really help. Um, but Constantine uh, wanted Christians to stop arguing. And so uh, there was eventually a council that Constantine kind of helped organize um, about this uh, topic. And it's known as the Council of Nicaea. And I want you to know uh, the term Council of Nicaea. I want you to know the date 325. Um, this is just probably one of the most important dates in church history of um, right up there with Martin Luther and the 95 Theses in 1517. It's just things that Christians should know if they are going to know their history at all. Know the Council of Nicaea in 325. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what Nicaea decided. So church leaders came together. Many of these church leaders had been persecuted before because the church had, had been persecuted. You know, so they, they come now and they debate theology and they talk about, is Jesus created or is he creator is he is he god or is he something else this kind of in between god and man kind of figure um and the the council and the christians uh, debate this and they say yes he is indeed um he is indeed god and so this is the creed they came up with uh, this is part of it not the whole thing um uh, but the, they built on the apostles creed and they said, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. And so somehow he's begotten from the Father because he is the Son, but he's not made. Um, and he is consubstantial, we'll go back to that, with the Father. Through him all things were made. And so Jesus is indeed God. He is God from God, light from light. Um, and this term consubstantial is really the, the key word you see up there that gets that gets um, debated. Um, is Jesus the same substance as God? Uh, they had this idea of essence or substance. And it's where we get this term that I put up there, this Greek term hom homoousios. Because uh, there was this debate, is he a similar substance? Is he homoi with an I in there? Or is he homoousios? Is he the same substance as the Father? And and the the creed and the, the people who formed, you know, the, the doctrine of Nicaea, um, they said, no, the Bible clearly teaches he is the same. Um, he is the same substance as the Father. He's not the Father. There's a, there is a, a difference in here. Um, but it's not a difference in, in essence. They are essentially, they're both essentially God. Um, and so that's why we get this term like consubstantial, which we never use in English. Obviously, we don't ever use homo, homo usias in English. But, uh, you know, another word for it would be the same substance or the same essence um, as the Father. And, uh, you know, so to talk a little bit about Athanasius, Athanasius was also, he was Egyptian. He, he was from Alexandria as well. Um, and, uh, and here, so here's another kind of, uh, art, artist, the same artist, um, depicting him. Um, the thing is Nicaea didn't settle all the controversy. Arius and his followers had, uh, political connections and for a while they gained the upper hand. And so the key figure in, uh, defending biblical Nicene orthodoxy against Arianism is this guy named Athanasius. 
And so I think Athanasius is a name that everyone should know because the Council of Nicaea may have decided this doctrine, um, but political um, political pressure was saying otherwise for a while. And Athanasius says, no, no, this is what the apostles teach. This is what the church teaches. They teach that Jesus is not a create, not a creation, but he is God himself. And so his works on this subject, his letters, his book on the incarnation, um, all these things are really kind of the foundation of so much of, of good kind of biblical um, orthodox teaching, what the what the, the the teaching that the apostles and the early church taught, and so this is a this is a name that I think we should all um, know, and uh, he's definitely something that you guys need to know. That's why he's in bold. Um, for Athanasius, one of the things that kind of the things we'll end on here is that this is not just an issue of kind of speculation. We're not just wondering, oh, who is Jesus? Is he, you know, God or man? Or you know, let's debate about this. It's not really a matter of like let's debate or let's um, argue. Uh, the, the key issue for Athanasius is salvation. Uh, for Athanasius, it is this idea, Jesus had to be fully God and fully man if he's going to save us. Um, he had to be fully God to restore uh, in us uh, what needed to be restored, which is the image of God. Um, and so the image of God, which we are made in, that is that is you know that is marred by sin that is tainted by sin this must be put back into place and so he kind of presents this dilemma and he's like hey we got this situation as we see here in this text what then was god to do what else could he possibly do being god but renew his image in mankind so that through it men might once more come to know him so men can't know him because of their sinfulness and their image the image that they were created in is 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 being tainted or has been tainted. And so God has to renew that. And how could this be done except by the coming of the very image himself, the true image of God, who is God himself, our Savior, Jesus Christ? Men could not have done it. The word of God, remember in the beginning was the word, the word of God, Jesus, came in his own person because it was he alone, the image of the Father, who could recreate man after the image. And I know that might be a little bit uh, confusing what exactly is he saying, but I think he, he's really saying that only God, who is who is himself pure and holy, only God could save man and, and recreate man into what he was supposed to be, which is this glorious image bearer of God. And that's exactly what Christ uh, does. And so Jesus had to be both fully God and fully man to make this happen. And that's why we should all know and kind of celebrate Athanasius and uh, and these you know other figures like Tertullian and Irenaeus who who helps us who help us so much in figuring out um, what good uh, Christian theology should be. Thanks for listening.